Hi ladies, welcome to my channel, Milk and Honey. I'm Kalaya and I'm currently 33 weeks pregnant and I'm getting really excited to meet my little boy. Um, if you are new here, please like, share, and subscribe so that we can keep this uh, tribe of ours growing. Comment if you have any questions or if you have had any similar experiences. Today, I'm going to be sharing the tea on pregnancy. <laughs> so, if you are easily offended or grossed out, this video probably is not for you because I am literally going to be exposing myself <laughs> and my own personal experiences um, that haven't been so pleasant with pregnancy um, that no one tells you that I had no idea and was not uh, prepped to deal with at all. So yeah, today I'm sharing what they don't tell you. <laughs> well, let's start with um, first trimester. First trimester, um, I wasn't as sick as some women say that they can get. Um, I definitely, uh, the way that I felt all day every day was just like car nauseous. I just felt really car sick all day long. I had to, com I had to always have some snacks on me and I definitely did not eat the best in my first trimester because the only thing I could really eat were like saltine crackers, um, plain Cheerios, <laughs> um, plain quesadillas. Like honestly, that like uh, bananas and rice, you know, it's kind of like the brat diet. That's all that I could really essentially eat. So, um, and then a lot of water, of course, and then my prenatals and everything. I would try to force myself to have vegetables and fruit, but I ate what I could. And then, um, first thing in the mornings were the hardest for me because I had to, I had to literally like sleep with saltine crackers next to me so that when I woke up, I wasn't lightheaded or wasn't going to throw up. So that way I could just have, as long as I had some food with me, I was okay. Another, <laughs> another, uh, pregnancy spill in the tea. Um, so <laughs> I, I don't know about most mamas. And again, again, this might not be for everyone. Everyone's body's different. Everyone's experience with pregnancy is different. For me, this is just what I've experienced that no one told me, and I'm sure it's because most women don't want to share it. <laughs> okay, so um, even in my first trimester, I know a lot of moms say that they start to pee themselves later on, but my baby has been so low this whole pregnancy. Like he is, his head is literally on my bladder. He's been low my whole pregnancy. And so I, <clears throat> I was having problems with like sneezing and peeing like in my first trimester because of how low he was. Um, and I'm, I'm all for like Kegels and pelvic floor exercises and all these exercises, but even speaking to my doctors, they're like, this isn't like a muscle issue. This is definitely like your baby's just very low. So you're gonna just have all that extra pressure. And I was like, okay, cool. And getting into my third <laughs> trimester has gotten obviously a lot worse than my first trimester. So I pee myself a lot. <laughs> I've had to get, um, and it's, it's, it's from ranges of like, oh, just a little bit of pee to like, oh, I need to go change. <laughs> I've, I've probably have gone and changed the most in a day probably like four times and that's when i decided okay i need to go get some basically like mommy diaper pads <laughs> so that i can just you know not stress about it or worry or still be able to go on a walk and for me I, when i walk i get a lot of braxton hick contractions braxton hicks contractions and so it makes me have to feel the urge to go pee even more um, so any type of exercise makes me honestly have to pee. So having, you know, for any mamas who's dealing with that, pads have definitely helped. Um, it's definitely frustrating in the third trimester because the pressure is so much more down there. Um, 
and there's times where I swear my bladder is like spasming because I'll feel like I swear I have a full bladder I'm like oh my god I have to pee right now like I have like stop the car like we need to go I have to pee and then I'll race over and go to the bathroom and sit down and nothing will come out like no, I have an empty bladder but just all the pressure of him being on my bladder makes me feel like I have to pee urgently all the time. So that can be kind of annoying because when you feel like you have to pee really bad and you sit down to pee and you have no release or relief, it can be kind of um, frustrating, especially in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep. So another thing with, for me in the third trimester with pressure, all the pressure, <laughs> is I have come to realize that um, a lot of women say that their sex drive um, increases a lot, like their libido increases a lot when they're pregnant, and that has been true for me. However, it's very <sighs> frustrating because your libido is higher, but then in the third trimester, now um, any intimacy with a partner with your partner is very uncomfortable for me <laughs> and I I there's just I just I swear there's just no room down there there's just literally no room it it feels like I'm a born-again virgin <laughs> which is like not very fun so <laughs> it's definitely uncomfortable something that I've you know obviously talk to your partner talk um, talk to your doctor if that's happening to you, because it's definitely since the third trimester with baby getting bigger and all the extra pressure, um, any intimacy is just not, not exactly the most fun. Um, but I guess there are certain positions that will help relieve that like side lane and stuff like that. Um, and one of the things too, in the third trimester, like later on, like 35 weeks plus, they say that sperm actually helps um, your cervix soften and ripen. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna we're gonna have to figure out a way to still get the sperm to be able to do that, but without the painful uh, <laughs> the painful part. <laughs> so that's definitely something that's bothered me in the third trimester. I I wasn't really uncomfortable throughout my whole pregnancy until really the third trimester. That's when I started to get some back pain. My second trimester, I was getting like growing pains is what they felt like in my hips because um, I think my hips were moving, but those were really dull and achy. Those didn't really bother me that much. I just ate and I'm literally burping up so much in this video. It's ridiculous. And I have heartburn right now too. Okay, so this is pregnancy brain. What was I just talking about? Oh, hip pain. Yeah, so now in my, uh, that's a real thing too, losing your thought. So now I've had, um, just on my right side, on my right lower back, I get like this sharp, like, like, I feel like I pulled a muscle type of a pain <clears throat> where like, I, it like doesn't let me bend or sit or like there's certain movements I can't do. But what has helped me a lot has been seeing a chiropractor and um, getting massages, not on that area because those muscles are already too stretched, but um, around that area to help it relax, <clears throat> mostly like in my hips. So that's helped me a lot. Another um, TMI that no one told me about, which this really isn't a big deal to me, but to some women will be, um, since we're talking about intimacy. Uh, so they say that you get like dark spots on your skin, you know, like on I've gotten like two on my forehead and then um, some women get that like dark line up their belly. I haven't gotten the line yet, we'll see. Um, and then, and then, <laughs> and then what I did not know was, and my, my fiance actually had to tell me this, cause obviously I don't, you know, I don't like go down there with a the mirror all the time, but, um, I guess that area will darken 
air can as well. So that area for me has darkened, which I'm totally fine with. I have no, I'm not weirded out by that at all, but it was just something that I had no idea would happen. So I know a lot of the times like they let you know like, oh, your nipples will darken, you know, they'll get more of a purple color, but they don't really tell you that that too can get more purple. Okay, so they say that for some women, the dark spots can kind of go away and that down there can kind of go away, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it doesn't go away. So for any mamas who are self-conscious about that, um, you know, on the other side too, you know, obviously some women bleach and do stuff like that. For me, I do not care, even if it stays that way, like <laughs> I'm good with it. And I think that like talking about it will hopefully make other women comfortable. And like men in general should definitely respect whatever changes happen down there. Hi, wolf guys. Did you say hi? Hi. Oh, you're such a good girl. Uh, Some things you want to share? No. Go eat your So, yeah. Anyways, um, and let's just, let's just be real. Any man who is uncomfortable with the way that looks, they might need to go talk to a counselor and figure that out for themselves because I don't think any woman who is giving birth to a child should feel self-conscious about anything silly like that. It's so normal, so natural, and it's, you're just comparing pink to purple. Like, I don't, I don't see the big deal, but um, some women, yeah, again, some women are very self-conscious about it. <coughs> for me, I kind of, I kind of prefer the darkening. So that's just me. Oh, the other thing I was gonna share with you ladies that no one told me, especially in the beginning of pregnancy, the like, you are way, way, way more gassy. And babe. <laughs> this is a good spot to do your videos, honestly. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. So I've told them how, so far I've told them like darkening of the the V. Mm -hmm. The areas. That areas in mm -hmm. the back side too. Mm -hmm. um, how intimacy can be more uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. There's just no room down there. Yeah. And gassiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lots of farts. Mm -hmm. In the middle of the night especially. Yeah. Where I've woken us up. Yep. <laughs> yeah. What else? What else have I done? I oh, peeing myself a lot. Yeah, so it's happened. On the couch. Mm -hmm. Peed on the couch. So you peed on the couch, yeah. Um, I think waking you up farting was probably the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you have anything else that you want to add to no. things that have been? Mm. Like the tea on pregnancy? I feel like it's been pretty smooth from my perspective, honestly. She's a very easy pregnant lady, thank God. I actually am a very, yeah, mm. I am. I'm not super, hor I cry. Mm -hmm. I, Every once in a while. Yeah, but only if I mm -hmm. see something sad yeah. or emotional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I Other than that, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think I've been your lady. Mm -hmm. Have I been mean? No. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not needier than normal, just normal no. needy. Yep. Normal needy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's been great. Is this you not yet? I'm afraid. No, but that you've noticed about me. Mm -mm. No, I hit all the things. I think so, yeah. Okay. All right, well. All like, right. Like, subscribe, comment. Dad said it. Sure. I'm the friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so yeah, that is about it, honestly. Um, that was in the beginning of pregnancy. The gas was very, very, very high. And it was the type of stuff that like you just can't control, like just running up the stairs and you're like oh <laughs> whoops and then um later in pregnancy it got better but it's still just like one of those things that is kind of like peeing like you can't really control it it's just one of those things like you just can't control there's so much pressure down there and 
Yeah, so these are all the things that I've been experiencing. Please let me know what if there's anything that I've missed for any other mamas that are kind of embarrassing to talk about, but I think it's important to talk about, especially to let ladies know who <clears throat> are wanting to get pregnant. Just kind of like some of the not so fun things that you get to look forward to. Oh, and also like heartburn. So I do get heartburn, especially if I eat after 8 p.m. Um, but what helps me a lot, and of course ask your doctor about this, but for me, I take a little bit of apple cider vinegar and that helps so much right before bed. It's I don't really get it in the daytime. Sometimes I do, but I get it mostly at night and taking a shot of apple cider vinegar before bed really, really helps. So yeah. All right, mamas, anyone else help me spill the tea or hopefully connect with me so I'm not alone. Maybe I just made this video and I'm completely just the oddball doing all these weird things. But yeah, so I will see you guys next time. Let me know if you have any questions or if you have any fun things that you can share for mamas to be as well.